If you haven't made the jump yet to NVMe SSDs, or you're just looking to upgrade or build a new rig, this may be for you. This is the Samsung 980 Pro. Let's talk about it. So earlier 2020, Samsung announced a refresh to their 970 series SSDs. And what I have here is the 980 Pro. So it's that refresh and it's still an M2 form factor. It's a one terabyte size. Soon they'll be offering a two terabyte form. But the key value here is it's a PCIe 4 SSD. Now, what's the advantage of PCIe 4 over PCIe 3, which are all of the current gen? It's double the bandwidth. So in theory, I could take the 970 series and if it was offered PCIe 4 connectivity, it should see double the speed. Well, it happens to be listed at least that way here because this offers 7,000 megabytes a second read, whereas my 970s were offering about 3,500. So if you take a look at the numbers, I happen to have a 960 EVO, a 970 EVO Plus, and this 980 Pro for comparisons. The 960 EVO and the 970 EVO Plus are both PCIe 3 only, while the 980 Pro is PCIe 4. Taking a look at the numbers, each generation saw significant growth in both reads and writes. Now there is a little bit of an anomaly where through all of the testing that I did, my 970 EVO did regress in certain write tests. Now this was consistent. I don't know if there was an issue with the SSD, if it's degraded over time. It's not that old of an SSD. I've only had it for about six months. It hasn't had a lot of significant transactions across it. I don't know if that was truly an issue or if that was specific to the 970 EVO Plus. Either way, when comparing the numbers and using the 960 EVO as the baseline, the 970 EVO Plus saw an average of 55% increase in read speeds over the 960 and 8% increase in write speeds over the 960. And now the 980 using the 4X PCIe 4 slot saw a 62% increase over the 970 EVO Plus in read speed and a whopping 105% increase over the 970 EVO Plus write speeds. So even though with the anomalies from the 970 write speeds over the 960, the 980 significantly stops on both the 960 and 970 series for writes. It is pretty darn close to what the box says those speeds should be. So that's good to see, especially with marketing these days, you never know are the, what, what are the circumstances that we're able to produce those numbers? So just because you have faster read and write speeds, what does that mean in the real world? Well, I have a video upcoming where I installed the 980 in my wife's brand new gaming machine. So the primary purpose of that system is gaming. So I did my testing around load times between that. Realistically, faster load times on maps on modern games don't impact your chances of survival. There were some older style games where if you were the first in the lobby, you may dominate. What I saw from the testing is not linear to what I saw from those crystal report stats. And that is, I saw nominal decreases in time depending on the game. So from like Rocket League or Modern Warfare, and I'll post those numbers below. But overall, if you happen to have a PCIe 3 card, you're not going to notice massive differences if you are solely gaming. Now, maybe if you are copying between two of these on your system, you're gonna notice something. For me, I'm just installing on a singular M2. I'm running these off the singular M2. If I'm doing any copy actions, it's just really realistically changing pointers in your OS to a singular device. So you could have some differences, some performance gains if you spend the extra money on the 980, if you already have a 970 or something, if you have multiple SSDs in your system. Now my computer is a daily driver. I use it for work all day long. I game on it heavy. I do video editing on it heavy. And I actually have 980 that's on its way. It should be here actually tomorrow or the next day that I will be installing on that system. I'm going to push it a little harder, see how far I can take it. I'm running a 970 EVO Plus on that system as well. So I would like to see what the 980 Pro brings from a, like a video editing aspect uh, if I load all my files on that SSD while I'm modifying them, uh, since I'm modifying everything in 4K. So I should have better details around that uh, if anyone's looking for any comments or feedback once this video posts.
So what are my thoughts on this? Well, I'm a big Samsung fan when it comes to SSDs. I've never had a failure or issue there. Also, Samsung markets this as the fastest consumer SSD on the market, and it probably is. I didn't scour the internet, but I wasn't finding anything that listed better speeds. Uh, but that's also because they're kind of one of the first to the PCIe 4 M2. Uh, they're not the first, but uh, for the consumer marketplace, they're one of the earlier uh, pieces. That's why this is the Pro and probably not a 980 Evo. Um, but overall, for price per dollar, I didn't notice a PCI 4 tax. There was no like 10% upcharge because this is PCI 4 now, which is really nice. It was on par with when I purchased my 960s or 970s. Um, so if you are in the market for an SSD, I, I would go with this even if you do not have an upgraded CPU or motherboard yet, it's definitely worth having. So if you ever do upgrade your system and you wanna move uh, your terabyte or two, uh, they're gonna offer up to two terabyte SSD, you can, and then you can take advantage of some of those speeds. Well, as always, I'm Chris from Code the Things. I appreciate you watching. Remember to click subscribe to be entered to win a big Navi graphics card. If I hit a thousand subs before the end of October, I will be giving away a card. So click subscribe, click like, and stay tuned.